Hello my fellow anxiety sufferers. This video is specifically designed for anxiety. Uh, I told you guys that I would be making a few videos over the next few days and excuse the outline thanks to it being 98 degrees. Um, I just want to explain a few things. I've gotten hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of mails on YouTube, email, uh, Facebook, AIM, MSN, Skype, you know, hey, this is going on. Can this really be anxiety? I want to answer a lot of questions right now, okay? With a story of my own, a personal story. You guys probably saw, you know, or heard that, you know, my mom was in the hospital with congestive heart failure, okay? I don't have a history of chest pain, trouble breathing, none of that stuff, okay? Every day my mom was in the hospital, I was in the hospital twice a day twice a day for severe, and I do mean severe, chest pain, trouble breathing. I, I, I was extremely fatigued, and you could probably see I'm still fatigued. I don't know what's going on. Extremely fatigued, okay? I mean, the chest pain was so bad, left side, I know it looks right on the camera, but left side, it went all the way up my neck, all the way down my arm, and it stopped about right here, and it was, it was on the inside of my arm. It felt like heart issues, just anxiety because I was thinking about my mom and what, what situation she was in. Um, yes, anxiety can cause anything. Let me give you a, a better example. Here's a, here's, here's a, a, hype, you know, a hypo, okay? Um, let's say you're worried about AIDS or HIV. Let's say you're a virgin. Just throwing that out there. Your parents were clean. You've never been touched, never had sex. But you're just so worried about HIV, just out of nowhere. For two weeks, you're, you're panicking over HIV for no reason. You have absolutely no reason to panic over it. You go get a blood test, guess what? You are positive for HIV. Why? Because, because you're so afraid of it, your body actually built up T-cells to try to combat this invisible foe. So you're actually positive for HIV. It's fake, but it's there. And the longer you think about it, it'll actually turn into AIDS. Like your body will actually start to, like it'll be fake, but your body will actually start shutting down because you're so afraid of it. So, and, but that would take years, years and years because we all know how long AIDS takes, just saying. But uh, I'm, I'm just saying, anxiety can cause anything, anything, literally anything. I mean, and, and I, I want to get a, a couple things out today. Uh, if, for those of you who suffer with anxiety, okay, and panic attacks, I want you to go out and spend 10, 20 bucks, you can find them, trust me, on a little wrist blood pressure meter. Just do it, okay? I know you're probably not worried about your blood pressure, or you're like me, and you're constantly worried about your blood pressure in your heart. That's just me. Go out and get a little blood pressure meter, okay? And I'm, I'm gonna show you a few little tricks. Even if you if you don't have the money or if you don't wanna if you don't want one, I'll show you a few tricks that that'll that'll tell you, hey, I'm probably okay. I'm probably eighty percent okay. Just saying uh, that this really isn't happening. Probably actually ninety, maybe ninety five percent. Probably gonna make it. Just saying. I mean, look at me. I've been dealing with this for three years straight. Three years. Okay? Every day I think about, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. My stomach, like, quit working. My intestines quit working. I, it's so painful. It is painful. Really painful. Like, really. And every day I struggle with the battle of, did I rip open? Am I, am I bleeding out? Am I going to die? Am I going to go through toxic shock? Etc. Etc. Septic shock? Etc. Every day. And people wonder, damn, how do you survive? Well, I survive thanks to OCD. That I mean, for real. And a lot of us do. I want you, those of you that suffer, I want you to inspect your life for the next 30 seconds. We're going to take a small little break. Inspect your life. And you tell me you don't have certain OCDs or certain little patterns that you follow when you get anxious that you do to attempt to stop your anxiety or panic or you actually do stop the anxiety or panic. 
that comes on. Go. 30 seconds on the clock. This Mountain Dew is really good. Slushy. It's like 98 degrees. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. I want you to think about everything that you do. Everything. And then I'm going to and, and divulge you at what I do. Here we go. Okay, so here's what happens when I get anxious. Okay, you see that bed back there? My couch bed I pull out. Okay, when I get anxious and I'm worried about my heart bleeding out, something like that. Hang on. The first thing I do, and I, I want to show you this if I can. No, it's not my penis. Calm down. I want to show you my hands. Okay? Ah, I hate this. Right, let me see if I can't do this. Is there enough light here? Maybe. Hold on. Let me let me let me turn up the brightness a little bit. Too bright. Okay. You see your your fingernails. Fingernails are and and this is you can ask any doctor or any EMT. Fingernails tell a whole lot about you. You see how my fingernails are roughly the same color and let me even change the color of my camera. Look at this. You see how it's roughly the same ooh, even in black and white. Oh my god. But you see how it's roughly the same color as uh as 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 the skin around it. That's a good sign that I've got good good circulation, okay? And here's a step. Take your thumbnail and without any weight underneath, push in and watch. You'll see it changes to white. Three seconds, let go. You see how quick that turned back? That's good. That means I'm not bleeding out. My circulation is perfect. Okay, that's step one. Step two, okay, honestly, step two, I lay in my bed, so I'm laying backwards, like, you know, I'm laying down, okay? I put my, my leg up and I extend all the way up like this, okay? So with laying down, and I'm and, and I'm extended, one uh, both legs up, but one leg cocked over on my other knee, so it's at an angle, right angle, okay. <clears throat> and I feel for the pulses. I'm sorry, the one pulse, which is located down by your ankle, which if your your ankle's right here, feel around. It's right there. You can find it. Don't push too hard, but you'll feel it right there. If you can feel that, holding your leg up, and it's good, awesome. That means that at least, at least, most of your body has a good quantity and blood flow. The third thing that I do, since my intestines are my biggest concern always my biggest concern this is gonna get just a little bit because people don't know anything about or a lot of people don't know now I swear to God I'm not gonna show you anything I promise but okay so this is gonna go down a little bit okay you have a hip bone right here so here's my hip bone okay all right coming down if you feel further down than this, or even actually find your hip bone, come on down, feel right in here. You will feel an artery. It's got a pulse. Hip bone goes straight down. Pulse. Both sides. I feel both sides. Now, you may end up feeling a bunch of uh, fatty tissue or Oh my God, is that a tumor? It's not a tumor. There's a lot of lymph nodes in that area, okay? No tumors, lymph nodes, okay? Third thing that I do, and I can't really show you this on camera. It, it just, maybe I can. Uh, it just, I don't think, I don't think it'll work in, in my most honest opinion. I don't, I don't think it's gonna work. But uh, third thing that I do is Are you not going to work really? See my eyes? Watch them.
Anyway, I can't do what I can because it's so bright in here. I check my eyes for dilation. If all of that passes my routine inspection checks, I tough it out as best as I can. Okay? If after an hour or two it doesn't stop, I go get my local visit to the hospital or weekly, daily, monthly, whatever you have, probably daily, something like that. Some visit to the hospital happens, but I go out to the hospital and get checked out. I just want everyone to know right now that anxiety can and does cause almost every single thing that you feel or that you're worried about. And when you get worried about something, you actually start feeling it. If you're worried about parts of your body going numb, well guess what? Parts of your body are going to start going numb. Happens. Your brain makes it real. A real example, scientific example. If you go to bed, okay, don't be afraid of this because this has only happened in maybe 1% of the entire population of entire recorded history. It's almost impossible. Your chances are greater of being of, of lightning striking an airplane and you dying. And that's a one in a billion chance, really. Okay, this is a one in almost 300 trillion chance. Trust me. Anyways, let's say you go to bed. And you know that moment like you're kind of awake but you're still in sleep mode and you're watching your dream. I know you know what and I know you know what I'm talking about. You just laying there watching your dream. Because you don't want to get up and whatever you're dreaming about is probably awesome. Happens. Let's just say, for instance, you fell off of a cliff in your dream. 99.999 repeating percent of us wake right up before we hit the ground. And that repeating goes on for a very, very long time very very long time it probably never stops if you were to hit the ground in your dream your bones would turn into dust literally you would die in real life your bones would turn into dust because your body would force your muscles to contract as hard as they could your bones would turn into dust and you would kinda liquefy you can look that up on Google. That is on the uh, uh, scientific websites everywhere. And some of you have probably even heard about that. Or you've probably been in a dream like me and you probably got hurt. You woke up with actual pain where you got hurt. Real pain. Your brain makes it real. Your brain is your best friend and it's your worst enemy. And I'm not playing. It is your worst enemy. You just got to learn how to make it your best friend again. Do you remember what it was like before you actually got anxiety? You know, for those of you that, that, that got anxiety after probably 18, I would say about 18, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you got it when you were like 12, 13, 14, or even younger, I feel really bad for you. You know, I really do because you probably don't really remember. And that really sucks, and I feel real bad. I've met a few children and teenagers and their parents, and and you know, they're, I've I've given them a lot of options and suggestions, and and I'm still I'm still waiting to hear how they're going, or how it's going. But you probably know what I'm talking about. Oops. And I remember, I remember, I lived year to year. It's like, damn, the year's already over. Damn, I'm getting old. And now it's day to day, sometimes hour to hour. And and a lot of people, I'm making two videos on, on this. We're hitting 15 minutes. I'm making two videos. And a lot of people look at anxiety like it's no big deal. Like, get over it. You're anxious. You're just stressed. It's a reaction. Just, ooh, get over it. I'm going to make two videos. This is the end of the first one.